Let me start my presentation. Thank you for coming to join my talk session. It is my first RaiseConf. I'm happy that I can talk in RaiseConf. Thank you very much. <laughs> my name is Kenta Murata. I am a C-Ruby committer maintaining Big Decimal and OS X platform support. I moved from Sapporo in Japan to Tokyo about five months ago. Next September regional Ruby Kaigi, one of the largest Ruby re uh, regional Ruby conference in Japan will be held in Sapporo. Sapporo is a great place and I hope you will all come visit. As I mentioned, I am originally from Sapporo, but moved last December to join Cookpad. Cookpad is a website for sharing recipes. It is actually the largest recipe site in Japan. Our purpose is to make people smile by making cooking more fun. We have about 15 million unique users per month, and we get about 543 million page views per month. Every day, about 40 engineers work their hardest to provide value to these users. The site is currently running on Ruby Enterprise Edition and Rails 3.0, but we are planning a top upgrade to Ruby 1.93 and Rails 3.2 by this summer. All our services run on AWS. Today, I'll talk about how we develop products at Cookpad. We have recently open sourced one of our internal tools, Chanko, which we use heavily in development. First, I will give a brief overview of what Chanko is, why it was made, and how we, it is used. This will be followed by a live demo and a more detailed description of Chanko's features. Finally, I'll give some more examples of how we use Chanko when developing cookpad.com. Let me begin the overview. We used to develop our services in a closed way. We used topic branches to implement new features, to validate hypotheses, and perform user testing. Unfortunately, we realized the limitations of developing this way about one year ago. Using this method, it was difficult to evaluate the real value of the things we built. Even though we were using personas and user tests, we still weren't confident that the features we were building were providing actual value. So we decided to change the way we develop new features. We stopped working in this closed world and went out to the real world. We wanted to make our new services based on real feedback from real users. Currently, we embed our new experimental services in the master development branch right from the start of development. We make these experimental features available for our internal staff and selected users in the production environment. This change allows us to get feedback from actual users and real experiences. By constantly validating or invalidating our hypothesis based on this feedback, we can ensure that development is proceeding in the right direction. This style of service development is basically based on some of the ideas found in the book, The Lean Startup. However, combining unfinished, potentially unsafe code with the production code can be difficult. The experimental code might be of low quality and have many bugs. They might break 
recipe pages and search functionalities which are the core of Cookpad. But if we spend all our time testing and making code reviews, it will slow down experimentation and the number of hypotheses we can test with our user base. Summarizing the topic so far, we found three we, we found that there are three problems we had to solve. The first is to limit the effects of any bugs or errors caused by experimental code. The second is to prevent the quality of the production code from being affected. Lastly, while maintaining the stability and the quality of the app, we had to ensure that we were able to maintain a high speed of development. We really needed a method to satisfy these three requirements. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any existing solution, so we decided to provide, produce one ourselves. We named this solution Chanko, and it is now available on GitHub. It allows us to maintain a stable and high quality service while we continue our experiment of trial and error. So what does Chanko allow us to do? I'll explain that with a simple example. This is a search tool that Cookpad currently uses in the production environment. Using Chanko, we can provide a new search tool with a different design on the limited users. Chanko can take care of errors occurring from the new search tools. If an error occurs, Chanko automatically reverts to the original search tool instead of raising an exception to the users. Next, let me explain how to create a unit of Chanko from scratch. First, you use the raise generator command to generate a template of a unit. Chanko maintains a single directory for each single extension. It is called a unit. The core of the unit is a file with the same name of the unit. Inside this file, extensions for models or controllers can be added. Other files such as style sheets and view templates are maintained as independent files, and they are stored in the directories in the same way as a Rails application. After generating the template, you write a code like this in the main unit script. The active if block sets which users are able to see the feature. In this case, we have it limited to cookpad staff. The scope block registers a function named search ptn that can be activated from a view. In this case, the partial recipe's new search will be output only for users defined in the active if block. The next step is editing the existing view containing the such tool to be modified by Chanko. This view outputs the existing search tool which is being used in production. We want to override this when the unit is active. Like this. We wrap the original HTML in an invoke block. This invoke method called is related to the unit definition I explained earlier. These parameters are the name of the unit and the function. Booting the application and opening up the page of top view, different search buttons are displayed for generic users and for staff users. If an error occurs, 
inside an invoked chunk unit, the block passed to invoke method is executed instead, and the app will revert to the original layout. This concludes my brief overview of Chanko. Next, I would like to give you a simple live demonstration of how Chanko works. The basis for the demo is a simple blog site that can be used by multiple authors. To keep things simple, you log in using only your username and no password, and just to store the name in the session. Uh, first, I start the server. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm? I forget to migrate to DB. Logged in as Alice and write an article. Next, I log out and log back in as me. and write another article. Currently, the application shows the author's names next to the article, but what if I would like to test out showing the user avatars instead. Moreover, I would like to test out this feature only for certain users. Let's try adding avatars instead of the username and show it only when the user with the name cookpad is logged in. Firstly, I generate a new chunk of unit. The unit name is show avatars. This generates the template files I need. Next, I need to restart the server. After generating the unit template, I edit the unit script. As you can see, the lines that are commented out shows an example of a unit implementation. I don't need these for now, so let's get, it, get rid of them. Now, I want to enable this unit for the user named cookpad, so I add an active block.
In this block, context refers to the views from which the function is called. So I have access to all the helpers that can be used by the view. Next, I implement a function in the view scope. The name of the function is show pad avatar. Next, I need to create a partial view named cookpad avatar rendered in the function I wrote just now. But before that, I am going to edit the existing view of article index to invoke the function. In this HAML file, I insert the invoke method call at the location of the user name here and put the original code that output the user name put into the block of the invoke method. Next, I create the partial view used in show cookpad avatar function. Before creating the partial view file, I need to create a directory for it. Finally, I create the new partial view named cookpad avatar. For the purpose of this demo, this file simply contains an image tag to show the cookpad logo. I've already added the cookpad logo to the application's assets. Now the unit is ready to be deployed. Logging in as a user cookpad. All of the username fields of the articles are now replaced with cookpad logos. Logging in as any other user shows the original layout. like this. As I mentioned, Chunk is able to gracefully handle an ex exceptions within units. However, by Default Chanko is set to raise exceptions in development mode. I need restart the server. This configuration can be set in the chunk initializer. If I edit the initializer to enable to gracefully handle exceptions,
And we start the server. Chunk will gracefully revert to the original layout. So that's basically how Chunk works. Next, let me explain in more detail how to use Chunko and what other things you can do with it. First, I invoke method. F first, the invoke method. The invoke method is at the heart of Chunko and is used to activate new features as I showed you in the demo. Before using the invoke method, you need to include the chunk invoker module in the class where it used, such as application controller. As shown in the demo, an invoke method can take a block. This is called the default block. The default block is evaluated in the following cases. One is the unit is unavailable, and the other is errors occur in a function of the unit. When you pass associative arrays of a unit name and a function name, their availabilities are examined in the given order, and the first available pair is evaluated. Chunk also allows you to insert invokes into controllers by passing in the name of the controller to the scope method. This will allow you to, for example, have a controller action redirect to a different URL if a unit is active. You can also use Chanko to extend the existing models. For example, add new associations or in instance and class methods using the model's block. To avoid the methods from overriding each other, the methods are scoped to a proxy object called unit. When calling the methods from inside the extension through this proxy, only the method defined in the active chunk are available. In the same way, you can also add additional helpers, which are also called through the unit proxy object. Chunk may sound similar to Rails engines, but they have very different characteristics. Chunk focuses on maintaining a stable service while extending the features of an existing application. In contrast, Rails engine focuses on keeping the features independent from existing application. Finally, I'd like to tell you about some different ways we are using Chunk at Cookpad. At Cookpad, we use Chunk to develop services for PC, mobile phones, and the Android app. Currently, about 30 to 40 Chunk units are being developed and validated at the same time. 200 chunk units have been developed so far. This slide shows an interface we made so Cookpad staff can toggle chunk units on and off without restarting the app. This interface is also implemented through chunk. At Cookpad, we use lots of caching to keep the service fast and responsive. We are able to do while also using Chanko by using a special cookie to disable page caching for certain users. Errors that occur in Chanko units are logged to a database. We have a special error viewer app that displays errors from the main code and Chanko units separately. In this way, we can prioritize dealing with errors that occur in the main code over the ones 
occurring in experimental chamber units. This month, Cookpad changed the layout of the top page. This slide shows several different versions of the top page that we tested. These were implemented by using Chanko. We first tested several pages internally and then selected three for release to a limited set of users. Finally, based on feedback from these users, we selected the final layout which is shown by default now. Another example is the search tool for smartphones, which were also tested with Chanko before being released. We also use Chanko for time-limited features, for example, a seasonal recipe competition or something like that. Since Chanko makes it easy to have the feature disable itself after a period of time. That's all. If you are in interested, please check out Chanko, fork it, and use it as you like. If you have any questions, tweet me or Shingo, who is the main Chanko committer. Thank you. Thank you.